Hey everybody, in today's video, I'm going to be going over how to set up SSH keys so that you can SSH between two Linux machines without the need to type in the password every time. Now, using SSH keys is also more secure than using just a password because passwords can be guessed or brute forced while keys cannot be. So before we get started, uh, the setup I'm running here is Ubuntu 18.04 and two virtual machines. One is acting as a client and one is acting as a server. Now, we're going to be SSHing from the client into the server. So we're going to generate the keys on the client side by typing ssh-keygen. Now we're going to pass it a key flag for type, and it's going to be RSA. We're going to be using RSA encryption on this. And then we'll use the B flag to specify the number of bits in the encryption. So we're going to use 4096 to make this more secure. Let's go ahead and press Enter, and it'll start to generate the key pair. Now we're going to leave this file in the default location, which is going to be the home directory and .ssh. The private key is going to be saved as ID RSA. All right, so now we have the option to enter a passphrase. Now this passphrase is going to be the passphrase on the private key, so that anytime you go to use the private key, you would have to type in this passphrase in order to use it. Now this is an added layer of security on, on top of the private key. It is an optional thing, but today we're going to be using it. So you uh, go ahead and type in a password and enter that again. Perfect, and that's it. Our keys have been generated. So if we cd to uh, .ssh, we can see that we have id underscore rsa, which is our private key, and id underscore rsa.pub, which is our public key. So the way this works is that traffic is encrypted with the public key and decrypted with the private key. So what we want to do is go ahead and put the public key onto the remote server and keep the private key on the client machine. Now the private key should be treated as a password would be treated. Nobody else should be given access to this private key. And the passphrase that we put on the private key is just in case anybody else were to gain access to it, they would still be unable to use it. So what we want to do next is make sure that OpenSSH server is installed on the server machine. So we're going to do sudo apt install OpenSSH-server. All right, now that has been installed, we can do sudo systemctl start sshd in order to start the SSH server. Now that the SSH server is running on our server, we can go ahead and copy over the public key onto the server. So we're going to go ahead and do scp id underscore rsa dot pub. Now we'll go send it to conda at, and let's go ahead and get the IP address of the server conda at 192.168.1.131 and we'll go ahead and send it to slash home slash conda go ahead and yes now notice that when we just ssh over into the server it asks for the password of the user and not the keys uh, after we go ahead and set the keys up we shouldn't need to enter a password anymore so now on the server, if we do an ls in our home directory, we can see that there is an id underscore rsa.pub. So what we want to do is go ahead and check if there is an ssh directory already there. We're going to do an ls-la, and it does not look like there is a .ssh folder. So we're going to go ahead and make the directory of .ssh. Now we can go ahead and cat idrsa.pub and we're going to send that over into the file .ssh slash authorize underscore keys. Now that's going to go ahead and put that in the recognized keys for the conda user on the server. All right. Now if we go back over to our client and we try to SSH to the server, we do SSH conda at 192.1 six eight dot one dot one three one we can see that a prompt pops up to enter the password to unlock the private key so it automatically recognized that there was a private key installed and just asked us to enter the password to the private key instead of the password for the conda user on the server so if we go ahead and enter that password 
we've now SSH'd into the server without using a password, just using the private key. All right, now we'll go ahead and exit out of the server. And if you put your key at a non-standard location, and it didn't automatically prompt you for the password on the key, what you can go ahead and do is SSH and then pass it the I flag, and that's where you can input the key. So ours is just going to be ID underscore RSA, and we can do conda at 192.168.1.131. And perfect, we are SSH'd into the server using a key instead of a password.